Hey there, my name is Dan Janjigan. I play Chris R. from the 2002 cult hit The Room, and I am currently playing uh, in my alter ego in the Room Actors Where They Are Now by Robin Paris um, out here in Los Angeles. And what made you interested in working on this show, spoofing your involvement in The Room? Uh, why did I want to work on this show, spoofing my involvement in The Room? I think the biggest reason is uh, a lot of the actors that worked with us, they I uh, saw all these documentaries coming out and all these magazine articles and all this cool stuff that uh, was happening around them. And we were all kind of an ancillary part of this weird deal that was going on. And being a part of this mockumentary allowed us to actually be involved in a piece of that. And I think uh, Robin did a great job of getting everybody together uh, for that. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Has being in this series helped your career at all? You know, inadvertently, yes. Uh, I had a chance to go on Wheel of Fortune, and I think I got that gig really because of the fact that I'd been in the room uh, when I was going through the judging process. That did actually come up, and, and one of the judges, I think, was a big fan, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and then I've had other roles that I've been able to get through Backstage West and other deals, and, and having this experience gives you just, it's it's better than having nothing. Uh, so it's, it's definitely helped out in that regards, but, um, you know, still haven't hit that that huge feature film yet, but I'm only 46, so i got plenty of time to go. Do you want to see a second season of The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? Man, I hope that this thing goes for 15 or 16 seasons. Uh, Robin is just amazing. You know, she's put together this whole, you know, ensemble cast. Um, you know, I came in from Austin. She's got, you know, people coming in from Arizona around the country to be a part of what she's put together. And they're just really fun, you know, I mean, again, if you can't laugh at yourself, then you probably uh, take yourself a lot too seriously. And so to, to be able to do these kind of, you know, one-offs and, and see the direction that she's taken it and, you know, her view of kind of who our alter egos are, it's been a lot of fun. I hope we keep doing them. I have a couple questions. <clears throat> Given your experience with the original movie and this, other than that the fact that the whole production is a lot more competent. What do you think is a major difference? Well, Jonathan, first of all, I think you're giving yourself way too credit on the competency of this production. I'm just kidding, obviously. No. Um, probably the biggest difference is, uh, you know, when... I think it's just probably, from my perspective, a matter of knowledge, right? When I started uh, back in 2002, I had just moved to L.A., and actually, The Room was the first acting gig I ever had. And it was just crazy how I got it. Um, that's, that's kind of a repetitive story I don't need to go into. But bottom line is when I walked on set, I didn't really know that any of the stuff that was going on was abnormal. Right? There were things that just seemed like, ugh, you, know, you never knew if you were filming that day. And you know, everybody knows now I filmed a 90-second you know, piece and I was on set for weeks and weeks. You know, So that was crazy. But um, you know, on the same note, now, just being in productions and getting a chance to see a, a real uh, set and the way that it's supposed to be run, it's, it's, a, it's a very cool experience to, to, to see something that's streamlined and, and run efficiently and, and that the vision actually matches up with uh, what was uh, set out in paper to begin with. How would you define a cult movie? You know, it's funny. To me, you know, what makes a cult movie great is the same thing that gives people joy when they're in the back of a bus. You know, when somebody starts singing a campfire song or, you know, you're, you're, you're chanting along with something and everybody knows, you know, what everybody else is doing and you find that fun in the group, I think that creates, you know, anything that, that, that's cultish, right? That you, you have a shared interest, a shared passion about something. It doesn't matter what your background is or where you came from. You're just excited and, and, and what makes cult movies great is that, generally speaking, they're horrible, right? Uh, you know, like I said, you can't take yourself too seriously. So uh, I think a cult movie to me is, is just, you know, it's, it's a piece of movie lore that was so bad that, that there's a shared enjoyment over, you know, thousands of people and they can, they can share that together when that movie's shown. And you have quite a versatile career. <clears throat> is it correct you used to be an Olympic athlete? Yeah, I've got a I've got a coffee table career. So yeah, anything that's random, that's fun to talk about around the coffee table, I I, I think I've stumbled into every one of those little deals. Yeah. What's it like playing an alternate version of yourself? Uh, it's you know it's weird because, 
you know, again, it's one thing to laugh at yourself. It's another thing to 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 put that on film, you know, and and look at what somebody else pictures as your alter ego. So, to, you know, to say some of the things that we say and to and to, to run some of the lines that we run, and sometimes it's hard to be honest with you, but uh, but the end product is great. You know, it's all harmless. It's fun. You know, I wouldn't in normal life go screaming at a kid that's looking in the back of my minivan. Hell, in real life, I wouldn't own a minivan. Uh, no, no problem with minivans. <laughs> but, you know, but I mean, the bottom line is everything is just a little bit, you know, off reality. What's your favorite part about Chris R? My favorite part about Chris R? Um, man, I, I would say I like, I like Robin Paris's Chris R better than Tommy Wiseau's. You know, I mean, Tommy Wiseau's Chris R is just this mean guy that's up on, you know, on a, who knows why he's on a rooftop looking for his guys, right? But, you know, he's, uh, there, he's kind of two-dimensional, right? He just kind of is just a mean guy that's out to get his money, and, and you know, we don't know a whole lot more about him. Uh, what Robin's done is she said, hey, here's this character, but we're going to give him a very, very elaborate backstory. And so, you know, what I like about Robin's Chris R is that, you know, he's, he's sensitive. He's got feelings. You know, he's got a family, and he's, you know, he worries about his neighborhood, and he takes, you know, what everybody saw as mean and violent and he uses it to kind of protect his friends and protect the kids in the area. So it's pretty cool. All right. And what are you up to now? <clears throat> uh, now I actually work, believe it or not, for an insurance company and I've done that for about 14 years. So I've got a bunch of insurance brokerages that range from Texas to Washington to Arizona. And so uh, I've got a bunch of folks that work for us and we built up a huge agency, which has been great, and I still do some acting on the sides. Um, filmed a commercial not more than a month ago, and I'm filming another, uh, believe it or not, a Christian movie coming up here in October. Uh, it's very non Chris R esque. Uh, but yeah, so just uh, still trying to do the things I love to do. Very cool. I have one last question. I understand you do motivational speaking. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little about it. So with my background, uh, I, I've done sales training and management for years, uh, going on about 25 years now. And so uh, I teach, uh, I, I do a lot of motivational speaking when it comes to showing people how to go out and actually create business that didn't exist, you know, overcoming their fears. Um, I, I wear this uh, band, this, uh, you probably saw me wearing this earlier, a few people commented on today, but, you know, I had a grandmother who was uh, in the 19, uh, well, the, the genocide of the Armenians back uh, that celebrated uh, back in 1915, and uh, she lived with us until she almost died. Uh, well, she died at almost 101, and so to have this woman that we lived with, and she saw most of her family killed off. She didn't even know that one of her brothers uh, was alive until she was in her 60s, and uh, you know. And, but but if you met her, she was like the funniest, coolest woman you'd ever met, and you know, to me, it's it, it's just such a cool thing, you know. You know, most of us grow up in a world where you don't have wars around you, you know, and Louis C.K., you know, makes the joke about, you know, there's people around the world that worry about if they're going to get their heads chopped off today. You know, we get up and we're just like, you know, we're finding things to be upset about, you know, and so, if, you know, a lot of what I like to speak to people about is saying, look, you know, you've got to have perspective in what you do, and what you think is tough is really not that tough, and uh, I, I think that's just a, a good lesson for us all to kind of <laughs> remember. Any? Oh, I'm sorry. Any last words for our viewers? Man, I love the fact that you guys still love and go and see the room. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I've never been that guy that thinks that, you know, hey, we're, we're you know, special for being a part of it. I just think it's just been a neat experience to be a part of. And I hope you guys continue to love it and enjoy it. And, um, you know, keep checking it out. And hopefully I'll see you at a show one day. One final question. Hold on. Shoot. <laughs> What do you think the title of the room stands for? What do I think the, the title of the room stands for? Um, you know, Tommy has his own deal. If I had to answer that question, because it's come up before, uh, I, I think he pretty much at the time really thought he could just shoot the whole thing in a room. <laughs> and I'm just being honest, you know, it's like, you know, we got there and there was just one room that everything seemed to be shot in. And, you know, if you've seen a disaster artist, he even talks about the fact that they had, you know, a perfectly good alley right outside the door, but he wanted to build out an alley in the same studio set that he did everything else in, in that one room. So my my premise is the fact that it was all supposed to be done in one one place, one geographical location. Maybe they just should have called it the roof. <laughs> hmm. 
All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat>